Reaction videos. That's what it's all about. Why don't you do reaction videos? We started React, so now we just take a few hundred grand a month from that and just throw it on the main channel. <laughs> and so we come to our story of the day. Reaction videos. What the heck are they? And why are they taking over the internet? Yo, that intro just turned out way better than I expected it to. And this video is all about what I just did reactions. Hey there, my name is Brandon and today I'm going to try and uncover just exactly why React videos are so popular on this platform at the moment. Looking at psychological principles, also from the creator's perspective, why so many creators are doing React videos, and then looking at what goes into making the best React videos so you and I can capitalize on this massive opportunity that's only going to continue to grow. But to uncover why React videos are taking over our internet culture at the moment, we have to go back in time quite a while. You see, reaction-based content, where you watch someone else watch a piece of content to see their reaction, has actually been around for quite a long time. Just think of America's Funniest Home Videos, which has been running since the 1990s. But really, this form of human behavior goes back thousands upon thousands of years. For example, think of a caveman who's just done this fantastic painting of a woolly mammoth on the wall. Right? He goes over to his friend, his other caveman, Bob, to get his reaction of his cave painting. He wants to see if it's good, he wants to see you know, if it fits the tribe, he wants to know culturally whether what he did is relevant and what he did was good. And that also elevates his experience. Or for another example, have you ever watched a movie by yourself and then you think to yourself, I would love to see this person's reaction to that movie. You go and find them, you sit down with them, watch the movie, but really you're watching their reaction to it. Why is it that we do this? Well, it comes down to some Italian scientists and monkeys. It's -a me, Mario, woohoo! But more on those Italian monkeys later, because when we come back to the 21st century, we have seen this genre of entertainment skyrocket. It started to kick off on YouTube in 2007, where we started to see reaction videos like this. <laughs> and I still remember jumping out of my chair at school when someone showed this to me. I hate this video. But that trend really got things moving. We then had the release of Gogglebox, a TV show that took us into the living rooms of everyday Brits to see their reaction to the media, news events, and television shows. And it's still going 20 seasons later with international spin-offs. But heading back onto YouTube, we had the introduction of the godfathers of the reacts genre, the Fine Bros, who launched their now famous series Teens React and Kids React, which became a staple part of millions of people's viewing experience on YouTube. I myself never really got into them, but I do remember a lot of people in my school watching them and sharing them around all the time. We then had shows like Tosh.0 and then Ridiculousness, which just took over MTV. And then we started to see many more YouTubers enter the scene. PewDiePie was already sharing his reactions to scary games and they were going viral. Then he started reacting to his old content. Markiplier joined the scene with his try not to laugh challenge, which went mega viral. And then something interesting happened. Sniper Wolf, who used to make gaming videos, switched her entire content model to reaction based videos in 2017. And then we started to see the flood of regular people reacting to movie trailers, music, and a whole range of other things, including YouTube videos. And then, Mr. Beast entered the scene. I paid someone to give us a list of the most unusual places on the planet. And on the list is this place with no gravity. What? Now to understand why audiences love React videos, let's now come back to the Italians and their monkeys. In the 1990s, a group of scientists conducted an experiment where they found something rather interesting. They watched a monkey pick up a piece of food. I know, groundbreaking, right? And they saw that when that monkey picked up that piece of food, a little signal went off in their brain in a specific region of the brain. Now you would expect that to happen, but here's where something interesting happened. They watched that same monkey watch a different monkey pick up a piece of food and that same signal went off in that monkey's brain. That means without having to even lift a finger, just by watching another monkey do something, they had the same psychological response which is crazy. The scientists later called these mirror neurons. And although the evidence isn't conclusive as to whether or not these exist in human brains, we do see a similar response. It could explain why we feel anxious when we see someone doing something that we're terrified of. 
even through the safety of a computer screen. Or if you're like me, you feel utterly embarrassed when you see someone up on stage stuff up on one of those talent shows live on television. It's one of the most awkward feelings I get. I hate it. And although we're looking at this from the frame point of reaction-based videos, this psychological phenomenon wasn't designed for the consumption of media. We've got to go back thousands upon thousands of years to understand why we as humans have this response. And it's believed to be due to social understanding and also developing stronger bonds with our fellow humans, which ultimately helps you with survival. And when you watch someone react to something with a big response, it's much easier to empathize with them because you know exactly what they're feeling. So it's kind of coming down to empathy. We want to feel connected with someone else over something else. It's kind of like if you've ever found a really interesting or hilarious clip on YouTube or the internet and then rush to find your friends or family to show them to see their reaction. But react videos through the internet allow you to have this exact same experience being completely alone. For example, you could watch a movie that your friends and family just don't find interesting. So you can't share it with them. You can't get that experience of seeing their reaction to that movie just because they don't like it but you could go online to YouTube and see someone else's reaction to something you actually love. And let's be honest, it's tragic, but there's a lot more lonely people in the world. And these react videos are fulfilling a social experience that otherwise they wouldn't be getting. And this is why react videos are taking over YouTube. Although not everyone loves react videos. Reaction channels are the scum of YouTube. But now let's look at it from a creator perspective and why so many of our favorite creators are moving into this territory of creating reaction videos. I mean, why did Mr. Beast, who has all of this going on, launch a react channel? Well, I don't want this to sound like a bit of a shot, but they're one of the easiest and lowest forms of content that you can make on YouTube and they come with a pre-built audience. What I mean by easy is that you don't have to create anything. You know that content is already there that you're reacting to and you just give your honest reaction. You give your opinion, you make some jokes about it, provide your professional expertise. You don't have to create anything and so it's a lot easier than traditional videos where you're putting out a lot of creative effort and you're coming up with something entirely new. This means you can make more videos, there's a high level of interest in them, meaning you get more views, they cost less to make, so you make more money and you keep more money in the bank. Is Reacts your most profitable channel? Then yeah, it reacts because it doesn't cost much. And so anything we make off Reacts, I put in the main channel. But is it ethical to react to other people's content? And what about copyright? I mean, here we see Graham Stephan jokingly bragging about how his reaction video actually made more money than Shelby Church's original video that he reacted to. The crazy thing is just the amount of time that I know you spent making that video. I know, <laughs> you know, uh, how I many... know and you just sit there and react. Like, that is, <laughs> is that what fair? annoys me. I'm like, <laughs> why don't you do reaction videos? And I just want to play you this real quick. As I hope we've all seen thanks to the Farm Brothers, reaction channels are the scum of YouTube. And the reason for this is that pretty much every single video that reactors make completely violates copyright laws and YouTube's own community guidelines about copyright. You see, I think Grade A's criticism there is entirely fair and I don't understand how some of these channels get away with it. I mean, look at Real Rejects. Now, don't get me wrong, I love their videos, I watch their videos, but essentially they show almost the entire show that they're watching and then share their reaction to it after the fact. They don't say too much while the show's going on. They're basically just showing a show so you almost get the same experience of watching it without having to pay anything, which is weird from a copyright point of view. But it doesn't seem like these companies actually care about it because they invite these guys to movie premieres all the time. So what gives? But it doesn't really sit right with me. You see, I think the key to making a good reaction video is thinking about the value you are adding on top of the original content you're reacting to. This could be making jokes, providing observations, giving professional expertise to increase the value and understanding of that content, or even just expanding the content, adding things to it to make it something entirely new and more value to the audience. And a great example of this is Corridor Crew's VFX Artist Reacts, where they break down bad and great CGI and then actually show you 
how it's done, the processes behind our favorite movies and the visual effects within them. You get the mirror neurons of excitement, joy, confusion, and even sometimes a little bit of anger, but you also learn a bunch when you watch these videos. And that's why they get multiple millions of views every time they upload. Insider's React series is a very similar concept. And if you think back earlier to this year, we had the entire Johnny Depp, Amber Heard case play out on the internet and entire channels were built upon the reactions to that case. One such channel, CLR, Criminal Lawyer Reacts, Bruce Rivers, saw a massive increase in the growth of his channel when he started to share his reactions to the case offering his professional opinion as a lawyer. It added value to the case, you understood it more and people came to love his content and watch all the other videos that he created in the past and the future videos he's creating today. And this shows you the power of reacting to trending topics. In fact, I even saw a similar explosion of growth when I reacted to Mr. Beast's 100 million subscriber special. By the way, is that a comment from Mr. Beast? Holy crap, it is. But I kind of felt a little bit embarrassed that he saw my video because it was a little bit cringy. But here's the thing, you don't have to be an expert to make these reaction videos. You could just offer your own observations, make jokes about content, and just add value, do the research yourself, and add more context to the videos. So what are you waiting for? Go out there and try and make your own reaction video. And this video, which I'll be posting really, really soon, breaks down how to make three different levels of reaction content. See you there.